H1, H2, and uh, the H1 compactness. This will be done by the mean of the wavefront set and the make a local defect measures. The key problem is to know, uh, in fact, how do they travel? This singularity is or regularity. How do they travel? How can we track these singularities? What way? What is uh, uh, their path? And the same question, of course, arises for the compactness or lack of compactness for sequence of solutions. We start with the singular support of a distribution. It's very simple. It takes place on the basis in omega or manifold. You consider a distribution. You, you can think, to avoid difficulties, you can think omega as the whole space. All right, there is no problem. So, uh, uh, point X0 is not in the singular support of U. These uh, four uh, statements are equivalent. X0 is not in, this, in the singular support of U if U is uh, smooth in the neighborhood of X0. Smooth, so that means it is in C infinity. If and only if there exists some neighborhood such that for every phi, Compactly supported, smooth and compactly supported in this neighborhood, phi u is of class C infinity. It's equivalent to the fact that there exists one phi equal to one near x zero, such that this property holds. So x zero is not in singular support of u if u is a C infinity function. Uh, in a neighborhood of X0. Okay. If X0 is not in the singular support, you take a function, smooth function, the support of near X0. Phi is, of course, a uh, compactly supported distribution. You take its uh, fully transform, and you see that this function, phi U, is of course, is in the Schwarz space, so it satisfies this estimate. For every k, it, it is rapidly decayed. Now, take this example. Uh, uh, u, uh, in this case, is a characteristic set uh, function of uh, uh, a half plane. x are negative. So, zero and one here. You see that U is smooth here, here, but not on X1 equal to zero. Now, if you take the derivative with respect to X2, you see nothing. It's equal to zero. So this derivative doesn't see that u is not smooth. So we lose something. Surely we lose something here. The singular support seems to, to don't see what happens in the spectral uh, directions of uh, u chapeau, u hat. Other examples in uh, uh, on R, the singular support of the heavy side function of uh, the Dirac mass at zero is uh, exactly equal to uh, a single point zero. Uh, the singular support of, it's a general fact, of a derivative is the one, the singular support of U, because you can integrate. If uh, P is a differential operator with smooth coefficients, 
So the singular support of PU is contained in the singular support of U. All these facts are, are trivial. If uh, P is a uh, differential operator with constant coefficients, it, it's a simple case. P is a, a differential operator with constant coefficients and elliptic. You can, uh, you can think to the Laplacian, any power of the Laplacian. So the singular support of PU and singular support of U are equal. We say that P is hypoelliptic. It's, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not necessary to be hypoelliptic. Ellipticity is not necessary. Okay. Now, uh, we define a conical set uh, of uh, the product omega times Aran star. Uh, this set is, is, conic is conical if uh, is conical uh, with respect to, to xi. I mean, if x of xi is in gamma for any lambda uh, non negative, positive, x lambda xi uh, is also in, in gamma. And we define the way from the way front of distribution U in this way. You take a point of omega times Aran minus zero. This is omega, this is x zero, this is direction C zero. So, this is a cone, a neighborhood, conical neighborhood of x0, x0. So, x0, omega 0, x0, x0 is not in the way front of u. If there exists a neighborhood v, of x0, such that for every phi in x, phi of x, smooth function supported in v, phi u, which is a distribution that is supported in this neighborhood, v, has the behavior of a smooth function in this cone. I mean, near C0, Fourier transform of phi u has the behavior of the Fourier transform of the smooth function, but only, only in this cone, near C0. I mean, if you take another spectral direction, C1, we say nothing about the behavior of phi u hat. It can be bad. We will have examples. This is the behavior of a, a smooth function, C infinity function. It characterizes the Schwartz space. But this is true in this code. Sorry, uh, here it's denoted by. Of course, uh, the wavefront set of U is defined by its complement. We said x0, x0 is not in the wavefront if. Uh, so it's defined by its complement, so it's, it's a, a closed subset of. Wavefront set of U is closed subset of this this set, and uh, I, I will write it. It's exactly the cotangent bundle of omega.
So we summarize in, in, in item two here, omega zero is not in the wave front. If local linear x zero, the distribution U has the behavior of a CMFD function in the direction, spectral direction C zero. So what we did, what we did is very easy. We take x zero, C zero in T omega star minus zero. First, we localize near x zero. We localize near on the basis. Then we localize conically near C0. We localize two times in this, in this order. This is exactly microlocal analysis. You localize first near the point, then you get the Fourier transform and you examine the behavior of few hat. It's exactly the job you have to do every time you want to make make a look analysis. Some examples, you take the Dirac mass, heavy side function, you know that uh, the Sangvila support is zero. Outside zero, it is smooth. So you are sure that outside zero, uh, the uh, behavior of the Fourier transform of uh, delta or uh, uh, h is good. So we are sure that the wavefront, for instance, of h, it's zero and something. You have two, two for the uh, uh, heavy side function, you have two, two possibilities, and the two are, are bad because uh, so it goes in, in the two cents and for the characteristic function of the, of a half play uh, half a plane in r2 uh, the wave front is so your distribution is smooth outside x1 equal to zero so the wave front will be on x1 equal to zero on this line and in the normal direction c2 equal to zero so it is uh, uh, in this form zero time x1 equal to zero and x2 c1 different from zero and c2 equal to zero you are normal to uh, the line. Straight line x1 uh, equal to zero. Now look at, at this example. You are you are in one dimension. X is in R. Uh, it's a, a nearly a, a half Fourier transform. It's clear that uh, this function is smooth outside zero because directly it is a continuous dominated convergence. It is, uh, I think, of class C1, C2. You have it for free. U is in C2. There is no cost here. Nothing to do. You derivate two times. The integral uh, continues to, to, to converge, it's good. Now, if you multiply by x, if you multiply by x, you, you get a derivative of the exponential. So you integrate by part, you gain, of course, power of t. That means that xu, xu is of class c3. c3. In general, you can you can see that x k u is in c k plus two. That means that u is smooth outside zero. So you are sure that the wave front will be of type zero times something. And we can prove that uh, the, the 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 wave front is exactly zero uh, k 
Xi with Xi uh, strictly positive. You, you calculate. Multiply by some uh, uh, compactly supported function uh, phi and uh, you take the uh, Fourier transform. Uh, it's a simple exercise. The last, I had another example. I thought I, I did OT this morning. Okay, no problem. It's interesting because it, uh, we can use it to, to uh, construct something interesting. Uh, I said that the wavefront set is an open subset of T star omega of the cotangent model. It, it, it is a closed, sorry, it's closed subset of the uh, cotangent bundle. And uh, the question is, consider a subset F which is closed in the cotangent bundle. So you can find a distribution such that F is exactly the wave front, C infinity wave front of U. Then there is two. is exactly F, like, like the support of a distribution. When you take a closed uh, subset of omega, you can uh, find the distribution U such that F is exactly the support. And it starts with uh, this simple remark. Let us say lemma. Take alpha in Z1. Some C0 in S n minus 1 and set U of X is the sum over K greater than 1, K minus 2, psi of K alpha x exponential something oscillating k x with uh, psi I would say that means c sharp c hat of zero equal to one and she had positive. You can construct it by convolution. You take something which is uh, even, function phi, which is even, compactly supported, and uh, you call it phi hat will be exactly phi hat bar. So, uh, And uh, you, you normalize to get this one. Uh, if you take the Fourier transform of this function, say fk, fk of xi will look like uh, K minus alpha C hat uh, ta, 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 ta. I'm not sure. I will check.
minus alpha. Yes, it's exactly. This one, voila. So you are sure that you had of for energy greater than one. You fix a G, you get the Fourier transform at G X is zero. All the terms are positive, but the one corresponding to k equal to g will be exactly t hat of 0, 1. Uh, so it will be larger than alpha plus 2. So you are sure? that you had is not rapidly decaying because G alpha plus 2 you had is greater than 1. So you cannot be smooth at 0 in this direction. It's a, it's a bad news. Doesn't work. Okay, so having this uh, example in mind, we can go further. Classical properties of the wave front. If X0 is not in the singular support of U, that is, in the neighborhood of X0, U is smooth. So if you localize you, you take the uh, true Fourier transform, you are sure to have a rapid decay. So X0 uh, Xi is not in the wave front of you for any C. The wave front of a, a, of a is good of a sum is contained in the, uh, the union of the uh, two-way front, of course. Uh, I mean, the wave front with respect to linear uh, operation does not uh, increase. If you multiply u by uh, some smooth function, you don't increase the wave front. If you derive u also, you don't increase the wave front. It's conserved, essentially. If P is a differential operator with smooth coefficients, the wave front of PU is contained on the one of U. You don't increase it. We say that this property, uh, we call this property the pseudo-local property. Remember, the only operator, the only linear map on the distribution set, D prime, the only linear map, not necessarily continuous, that conserves the support are the differential operator, the Peter theorem. The only linear map on D prime that conserves the wave front, that's not differential operator. That will be pseudo differential operator. Okay, so we start, we start in, in a good way. Differential operator conserve the wave front set. They do not increase it. Uh, okay, uh, here are two words about the uh, Projection of the wave front. Uh, pi here is a canonical projection of the cotangent bundle on, on, on uh, uh, the basis, on omega. Xc uh, gives x. Uh, the projection of the wave front is exactly 
the uh, Sangula support. It's very easy. If you are not here, clearly you are not in the way front. And of course, if you are not in the way front, that is, for any XE, X is a XE, is not in the way front. Uh, sorry, if uh, you are not in the projection of the way front, so for any XE, X is a XE is not in the way front, so you can, you can uh, intersect uh, the neighborhoods or all the XE by, by, by capacity of uh, the uh, sphere S n minus 1. You can do the same job, you can perform exactly uh, the same, uh, the same uh, steps uh, for the uh, Sobolev wavefront. You take any real S, you will say that uh, omega zero in zero C zero is not in the wavefront. Sobolev HS, I uh, wrote it in this way, that, 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 here. Omega zero is not in uh, WFS, uh, the Sobolev S away front of you, if there exists a neighborhood VX zero, a conical neighborhood of C zero, such that in this conical neighborhood here, you have the behavior of uh, HS function. I mean, you take the Fourier transform of phi u, you multiply by the, the right, uh, weight, the one of uh, HS, and you are in, in L2, microlocally in this direction, near X0 and microlocally near X0. <coughs> of course, if uh, omega is not in the wave front of you, it's not in the wave front S of you for any S. I, I, I would normally, we, we, would, we would write. We should, we should, we should write the way front of you should be written of you. Okay, so it, it's contained in all the way front S because you are better. You are rapidly decaying in W, so you are in all sublevel space. But historically, uh, this way front was the first uh, to be to be uh, introduced. Okay, so the goal is uh, to study to analyze the way front of solutions of PDEs. You have distribution solution to some uh, uh, partial differential equation P u equal to f. We will ask to partial differential operator P to don't uh, to don't destroy the distribution. I mean to don't introduce additional difficulties, additional singularities. So we will ask to it to have smooth coefficients. It will be enough good. But some work can be done even if P is not uh, perfect. So, uh, for this purpose, we, uh, we construct an algebra of operators. Algebra, that means it's stable, it's uh, linear space, stable by composition, and in algebra in which we can invert, in some sense, the elliptic uh, differential operator. That will be the algebra of the differential operators. The idea is very simple. You take differential operator this way, what, what people did for centuries to apply P to a distribution or a function, you, they derive distribution, the function, they derive, they multiply by the coefficients, and they make the sum. These are two operations, successive operations, disconnected. The idea is to say that actually it can be 
uh, in the same, uh, uh, I, I will say, in the, it, it can be done in the same process, in the same coherent process. So you continue, here you continue, uh, say, for instance, your distribution U is good, uh, is, it's in a good space of test functions, uh, Schwarz space. You replace the derivative by Fourier transform in this way. Uh, you can integer this sum in the uh, integral. So, so you obtain here some function, P of x and xi, which is this sum, this sum, which we call the symbol of P. It's exactly the symbol of P. That means that the symbol of P, that's the function of x and xi, in which you, you obtain it by just replacing each derivative, partial derivative dx alpha by xi to the power alpha, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n. You obtain a function on uh, t star r, on r times r. Now, you examine this integral and you, you see that for u in s, actually we can replace the symbol p by a class of functions in, uh, that is larger than polynomial functions in C. We can, we can take a of x and c. In our case here, for differential operator, When the two operations, derivation and multiplication by the function a, coefficients a, are completely disconnected, uh, the symbol is polynomial in C. Okay. I claim that that was the, the first idea. Uh, we can replace p by uh, uh, we can pick it, we can use uh, uh, this P uh, in a class of symbols. I will, we will work with the simplest class. Very intuitive. We ask just, we call it SM, so we fix your order. M, it can be positive, negative. Uh, a is smooth, and the behavior of A is the following. When you derive with respect to X, nothing happens. When you take a derivative with respect to C, you lose alpha power, uh, length of alpha power of C. I mean, it has, the symbol A has a polynomial behavior in respect to C, uniformly with respect to C and X. And this uh, symbol A doesn't see, is not affected by the derivative with respect to X. No problem. For instance, for alpha equal to beta equal to zero, you have nothing here. A is just bounded by some function uh, 1 plus C power M. It's a polynomial behavior. With respect to C, it has a polynomial behavior. But this behavior is uniform with respect to X. It's the most, the, the, the most intuitive class. Of course, there are classes which are, which are much more complicated. In originally, this class was called S1, SM10. In the book of Omodar, you can find SM rho delta, with rho and delta 
uh, are two parameters. Uh, so uh, when you take these derivatives, you replace minus uh, alpha by minus rho alpha, and you lose delta plus delta. So it's less good. Uh, the intersection of all the SM uh, classes is uh, denoted by S minus infinity. If, if a symbol A is in, is in this class, that means you can here put M, roughly speaking, minus infinity. We, we will see that the operator corresponding to this symbol are very good. They are regularized. They, they uh, map any Sobolev space in H plus infinity. I mean, in C infinity. And this one is a union of all the SM. Uh, this symbol is called a symbol of other M. Some examples of symbol. If you take a differential operator with bounded, smooth bounded coefficients, uh, with bounded derivatives for the A alpha. So your A is in SM. If you take A of C only, and dependent of x in the uh, Schwartz space, so a is in s minus infinity. This uh, uh, function is smooth, it's very simple, it is in sm. It's not a polynomial, but it has a polynomial uh, behavior. If A in, is in SM, so this derivative of A, look, you lose, I will, I will say, you gain alpha. Nothing happens in X, so this derivative of A is in, is in the class SM minus a length of, of alpha. Uh, if you take two symbols, A and B, in two classes, SM, uh, SM prime, uh, the product, direct product, is in the class SM plus uh, M prime. Now we come to symbols uh, that are elliptic, that satisfy something like this. Uh, we say that A is elliptic, so uh, you can prove that 1 over A, the inverse of A, is also a symbol in the class. S minus M. So, for instance, you say for this, if you if you if you take minus M here, you are exactly. Uh, pay attention, please. This is not a symbol, because when when you derive with respect to X, uh, you have xi. That is a problem. It's not a symbol. Also. A symbol cannot be, cannot be independent of a part of the spectral variables. If A of X and C is, for instance, independent of C second, it's not a symbol. No. It's necessarily a differential symbol with respect to C prime. It's a polynomial in C prime. I mean, if I of C, you write C as dispatch it in two parts, C prime, C second. If A doesn't depend on C second, necessarily it looks like this. If it's of order M, Okay, I alpha of x and c prime alpha. Necessary. Think to, please, think to tangential to differential operators, tangential symbols, because we will have 
to deal with these symbols. Don't forget that we will, uh, we will uh, uh, solve differential, differential equation, partial differential equation. We will start from, <coughs> from initial data, from uh, initial uh, hypersurface. So we will have to deal with a tangential uh, to the differential operators. That cannot be global to the differential operators. Okay, first result. Take a sequence of uh, let us see the let us see the, the, the result in the simple case of uh, uh, integer. I will take a, a, a sequence of symbol a g equal to, and I assume that a g is a symbol of uh, in the class s minus g. So the first is is a symbol of order zero, the second of order. Minus one, minus two, and so on. General symbol. Each AG lives in this class. Zero, minus one, minus two. What says, what this result says, is that you can find A, a symbol A, in the first class, I mean, as zero, such that I will make it like the engineers. Approximately, we have A AG. That means this uh, we call we call this an asymptotic expansion. Development asymptotic. That means that A is equal to any finite sum up to a reminder that is in the following class. I mean A minus the sum from 0 to, say, K, AG, belongs to S. 0 minus k plus 1. Please remind what does it mean to be in this class. That means that the symbol here at 0 order without derivatives uh, behave like 1 over psi power k plus 1. Think to the derivative in the uh, Fourier transform. Think to the behavior of the Fourier transform. This is a gain. When you are in this class, this is a gain with respect to this difference. I mean, in your calculation, after you, uh, you, you can forget uh, uh, with this. Uh, it's, uh, it's presented in a general case. Mg is a decreasing uh, uh, sequence of number, real numbers. You can start at, uh, at 1, at uh, 10, at minus uh, 10. Uh, uh, Ag uh, is, uh, is in Smg. So uh, there exists a symbol A in the first class, Sm0, unique modulo S minus infinity, uh, such that uh, of course, uh, you can also you can also uh, ask to uh, A to be supported in the union of the support of A G. It's important such so that the difference A minus uh, the sum from zero to to uh, k minus one is in the first class coming after S M K S M K minus one. It's called an asymptotic expansion of the symbol A, and we write we write it in this way. This this remark will allow 
allow us to invert elliptic symbols. It's very important. Think to, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, you know, Neumann series? If x, if x uh, z in c is like this, it works like this. Okay. This is this is the point we would use to invert elliptic operators. Uh, just one word about the proof. I will not. I will not uh, develop the proof. Just one word. It's based essentially on very simple argument. Simple. It's uh, known as the Borel lemma. We take. I use the A, say, alpha G, a sequence of real or complex numbers. Any sequence. So there exists F, symphony function on R, such that uh, for any G, the G uh, derivative of F in zero is exactly alpha G. You can construct a function such that the derivative of order G at zero of F is exactly alpha G. That is the, the, the central argument in this proof. You construct. You have to, you have to control the symbols. This is very old. The differential operator are less. Okay, now I just here I just introduced the symbols. Now we will produce operators with the symbols. This operation uh, is called quantization. You have a symbol, how uh, you can uh, design an operator, a map on distributions. For either in SM, we will, uh, exactly as in the beginning of, of this chapter, it's the same, the same integral, now we take A in SM. So, what is the story of uh, the function in the uh, Schwartz space? It's, it's really uh, obvious. It's a direct computation to prove that this function, if u is in S, this formula defines a bounded map. Continuous. It is continuous from S to S, that means this function, this integral is Schwartz function, and you have an idea about the, where are the commutation? Just one word. A is a continuous linear map from S to S. A is bounded. Just a remark before continuing. Here, when you take u, if u 
is compact is reported, not in S, but in particular, if it is compact is reported, you lose, you lose this property. Definitely. It's not the case when A is a differential operator. When A is a differential operator, of course, A, U, has compact report. If U is compactly supported, A, U is compactly supported. It's not the case if A is a differential operator. Because you see, you don't see U, actually. You see only the Fourier transform. So you lose the compact report. First remark. A second, you, we know the behavior of the brackets with xg, because you, you will need these brackets if you want to prove that au is in the Schwarz space. You know the behavior of the Schwarz space. So uh, this essentially uh, pa, 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 pa. There is a constant, I don't know, a power of 2 pi, perhaps uh, i or i to some power minus 1. And this bracket, da, 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 uh, with uh, some constant. They are in the notes. The formula has uh, uh, precisely uh, uh, written in the notes. So here, you see, yeah, you lose a power. I mean, you gain a power. This symbol is in the class S M minus 1, because you have commutated with Okay, so A define a bounded function on S, exactly like a differential operator, for instance, with constant coefficients or with bounded coefficients, as well as uh, their derivative. This operator is called to the differential operator, operator of symbol A. Uh, you can denote, I will denote it by a x capital G or op A. So here uh, I insist uh, if U is compactly supported, AU, AU is not uh, uh, anymore compactly supported. You, you, you lose this property. Here is the, the, the I, I would say, the more technical part of any presentation on to differential operators. Any, any course, any uh, uh, book, when we arrive at this point, generally, the proofs ask it. Because it's very, very long, very technical, not, <coughs> not, not fundamentally, fundamentally a complicated, difficult, but the first point uh, concerns the adjoint. If A is, uh, so you take a symbol A in SM, you consider the associated to differential operator. So A is bounded from SM to from S Schwartz space, A of X and C is in this class of symbol. So we know that the attached to the virtual operator is bounded 
continuous on the Schwarz space. So it's, it's uh, normal to, to say if the adjoint, we know it, it exists. We have something like this. I will, I will write A of X and D star. Okay, we have something like this. But is it a pseudo differential operator? Is it in up of uh, some, I will say, SM star? I don't know the, the M star. And the answer is yes. If A is in up of SM, is, it is attached to some symbol in this class, it's adjoint from S prime, the temporal distribution to S prime, is also it's a differential operator in the same class. And we know its symbol. The symbol is exactly this asymptotic expansion. Don't be afraid about this, because generally we only use the first terms. You can, we only use alpha equal to zero, alpha equal to one, maximum alpha of length two. And we forget about the rest. So, uh, for instance, here the first term is a star, the the first term is exactly alpha equal to zero, so a bar. Complex conjugate of A. The first term is the complex conjugate. The second term is the sum of one over E, I, the XG, the X, the XG, a bar, and so on. The first term is a bar. The second one over I no plus sub I will say. Alpha is the same. G A N. So X G X G plus up no something which is S M minus two. This, this symbol, this is a symbol, this symbol uh, will give you two derivatives. You, you will gain two derivatives. It's two times smoothly. Uh, pay attention, please. The duality uh, we are talking about is this one. UV. This is the duality, and it is the duality S prime S in this sense. That's you, you get when you make, when you apply A and. Now, for the composition, if you compose two differential operator of symbols, uh, respective symbols A1 in uh, SM1, A2 in SM2, when you compose them, you obtain the differential operator in the class S, M1 plus M2. Clear? With this, 
asymptotic expansion. Again, if you take A1 and A2 as differential operators, this formula is finite. It is exact. Because A1 will be a polynom, A2 also a polynom. You compose in this sense, and uh, of course, uh, when, you, when you compose two polynomial differential operators, P1, P2, of course, uh, you take the derivative. Sometimes the derivative hates the coefficient, sometimes it hates the other derivatives of the uh, distribution. So this formula will finish exactly at uh, uh, order m1 plus m2. So the first, the first term for the composition, the first term, for instance, alpha equal to zero, uh, will give a1, a2, simple product. The second one, you lose a xi on a1, and you take the derivative with respect to x for a2. It's really a composition of derivatives. The symbol of uh, the composition uh, is uh, uh, classically denoted by a1 b equal to uh, a1 uh, ds a2. If a1 and a2 are two differential symbols, the asymptotic formula is exact. In practice, uh, uh, we, we don't need the whole asymptotic expansion. The most we will we will see it uh, in practice, really. So we summarize the, 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 all this result. If A1, A2 are uh, respectively in SM1 and SM2, class of symbols, the composition is the product of the two symbols, XD plus rest which is also a differential operator, but in, the, in this class, the sum minus one, you lose, I mean, you gain one derivative. This operator is better than this one, because it derives one time less. The bracket, A1 bracket A2, is uh, equal to C, X of D, plus, plus rest, where C is the symbol uh, given by the Poisson bracket. We will use this formula. It is, it is really uh, crucial. And R uh, uh, has a gain of two derivatives. OK, how the differential operator act on Sobolev space? We hope. In constructing this theory, we hope that they are not uh, uh, worse than differential operators. It, 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 that cannot be worse. So at least, at least, as well, they act as well as the differential operator, the good differential operators, say with the constant or bounded coefficients. If A is uh, uh, in uh, S0, uh, I mean, it uh, think to uh, function on, of C homogeneous of degree 0. It will be there. So it uh, acts continuously on L2. It is bounded on L2. Uh, the proof is developed completely in the notes. Okay. The idea is there. You just consider the kernel and use uh, a short lemma. I will do it in a in, in, uh, simple case. I, uh, I want to prove that there exists some constant satisfying this estimate, okay, for any u in L2. So I will do it for function of uh, the Schwarz space. 
révélation. No pub. It is dense in L2. So I write I of you. It's uh, I forget about the uh, two pi. I of x and t. You had. And uh, it develop the Fourier transform. The Y. Let's see. And how we find the kernel? In Y. I don't know. Moins y. Xi. I of x. OK. Everything is uh, here. So, K A of x and y, it's c over rn. Voilà. Assume, for instance, that uh, your symbol is in a very negative class. Think to You are sure this integral converse. It's integral with respect to xi. Okay. And apply the sure lemma. Sure lemma is a classical result that tells you if your kernel is good enough, you act continuously on L2. Uh, take a K of X uh, on R to N. You assume that uh, essential ship on X of is bounded by some c. k is uh, in L1 lock in x and y. And the same on y. Bounded by some constant u. You can put a, b. So you are sure that the operator with kernel k will be bounded on L2 uh, by uh, A, B. Voilà. Si. Ça ici. We know the kernel. If you take A in S minus uh, capital M with M very large, it will be good. Sure lemma will be satisfied. It's not the case. We are in the case where A is S0. OK, but it's not a problem. Because the idea is exactly the symbolic calculus. That's why it's, it's, it's easier to work with, uh, with differential operators than with differential operators. They are more. I, I would say, uh, it's, 
they, they allow, they allow uh, I would say, some approximation. You can lose something, but it's not definitely lost. I explain the case. Look, to prove that A of X and D, you want to prove this uh, constant two, okay? So you write this like this. That gives you this L2, okay? You use the uh, adjoint, but adjoint A star is exactly A bar plus, so. It suffices to prove this fact. But this operator is exactly A bar plus up of S minus 1. A, A star, I will say, A of XD, A star of XD is exactly of XD plus L minus 1. This is a symbolic calculus. This is a differential operator in the class S minus 1. So, if we prove that this operator is bounded on L2, and this one will not, will not be a problem, because it's a, you, you can take some constant s, which uh, it's, uh, is uh, larger than uh, the ship of, of A, because A is S0, so it is bounded. It will be bounded. And this one, you have to prove that this, this, SC, this uh, operator is bounded. You repeat the process. L1, you in L2, is plus R minus 2, U. So you gain another degree, and so on, and so on. You reach minus N plus 1. So you can forget for this. You have ju just to deal with this one. And uh, this is very easy because you, you, you add some positive constant, you know, flowers, and you take, uh, you take the square root. It continues to be the differential operator, which is positive. The idea is the sure lemma and the symbolic, uh, symbolic uh, calculus. Okay. If you prove the... Uh, action of uh, uh, up uh, of S0 on L2, uh, I think everything is closed because you have a natural, a natural uh, uh, path to come from uh, of space HS to another one. It's, it's th this operator. It's, it's very easy. It is, uh, it's an isometry between H S and uh, H S minus R for every S. So, assume uh, theorem for one is proved. So, an operator of order, so differential operator of order M, automatically is bounded from H S to H S minus M because of this composition. You write A in this way. Here, it is an operator of order zero. This is isometry, like this one. And now, you start, you start from HS. You apply lambda S. You will be in L2. 
you are in L2, you apply this operator, which, which is of order zero. You are bounded. And you come back. You are in, uh, you start with, uh, with, 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 with what? A is, uh, exactly, exactly. You come back, you come back with this, you come back to M minus uh, S minus M, sorry, S minus M. Of course, if, uh, if A is in SM for, for all M's, all real number M's, minus 10, minus 1,000 by, it is in up S minus infinity, it will be bounded from HS to any HT, we say that it is infinitely smoothing. All the calculations we make, all, all the operations uh, we make, are up to an infinitely smoothing operator. We don't see it. Something uh, that will be very useful. especially in uh, propagation of, uh, of uh, microlocal defect measures. It's a uh, guarding inequality. Uh, uh, we will just uh, see it in weak form. Assume uh, you have a symbol A in uh, the class S to M, and uh, such that there exists uh, some constant satisfying real uh, of uh, a of x and xi uh, is bounded by below in this form. For xi large, okay, larger than one, two, the small values of xi uh, never, never change life. Uh, so, for every n, you can find the constant xi n. Pay attention, please. If n is, if you want, this norm is very small, that is, n is large, the constant can be large also. But it, it, it's not a problem. We can allow this constant to be, to be uh, very, very, very large. We, we will see why. So, uh, uh, for every n, there is the answer that the, this uh, real of a u u is bounded by below by the norm h m square minus this quantity. In this way, it seems to be uh, you, one can not see. Uh, why it, it can be useful. Look, very simple. Assume you have very quick, very soft application. Take UK. Alors, pas de bêtises. In L2, H1, I will say, Rn, in some uh, support of UK is in some ball, just to fix the ideas. And assume that UK, tat uh, tat weakly converge to zero in HM. First, this duality is well-defined. 
Look, A is bounded on uh, A is of order SM. Okay. It is bounded on HM. This uh, this uh, sequence uh, will uh, converge weakly to zero in H one minus M. Okay. And uh, one minus m, so I will take to be h1. So I will take a just to have h1. Uh, I will take A of order I will take everything A is zero just to simplify the situation zero L two and M equal to zero voila so this weekly converts to zero, also for UK, and this is larger than constant UK in L2, but this quantity now is minus cn h minus n norm of u it will go to strongly to zero because you it converges weakly to zero in l2 so strongly to zero in h minus n you don't see you don't see this term. So this quantity is almost positive. Almost positive. It, it is important to define micro local defect measures. We will use this fact uh, in a crucial way. Uh, that I think uh, here. I I prefer to 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 let this uh, uh, part for tomorrow because I want to finish the whole block. Thank you. <laughs>